Hello everybody, Smith here. Welcome back to some more BD Armoury. Today we're doing another Bits and Pieces compilation where I take some ideas and thoughts I've had, but where I don't have enough stuff to make an entire video out of it, and I just throw them all together into a series of shorts. Um, I mean, I say another Bits and Pieces compilation. Uh, the only other one I've done was almost exactly three years ago, which is at least better than the time it normally takes me to respond to messages. Um, in the background you can see a little test I threw together with my Destructinator, which I made for the Destroy the KSC video a few weeks ago, and I just wanted to see how its firepower did against some ground units. So I took some stationary tanks and blasted the hell out of them, and yeah, it took them out, but uh, that armor is some tough stuff against Gow 8 fire. I'm not sure if this is a bug or needs rebalancing or something, but I just sat there against an otherwise wrecked hull and just blasted it for about 10 minutes and almost nothing happened. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get cracking, shall we? In the first Bits and Pieces compilation I did, I tried to see if you could actually use dumb fire rockets as an effective air-to-air -air weapon. I strapped some of these hydropods, I think they were the hydropods, either the hydropods or the other one whose name escapes me. But uh, they didn't work, they did not work at all. And I got uh, quite a few comments telling me I've probably done this wrong or that wrong with the settings. And so after that I actually went and I tried all those adjustments to the settings. They still didn't work, but a few versions of BD Armoury have passed since then. So uh, I have um, tried to set these up so they should work and uh, we'll see. But we'll put the, put the issue to bed once and for all, um, three years later. Anyway, yes, uh, so this is a 2v2 with my lynxes against my cyclones. I wanted sort of one of these craft to have a, an obvious advantage, so the lynxes in normal combat should walk, walk this, and they should here as well, assuming the rockets work. Let's, uh, let's get them into the air. And our competition starts. Now, of course, without any missiles on either side, they are just going to race towards each other in a extremely high-speed joust, and then we shall get into the uh, into the dogfighting. Oh, my word, they selected the hydropods. We saw the targeting reticules, but then they vanished. Nothing going in in either direction. No, this, this is not looking hopeful. Adam Kerman comes around. Trying to line up a shot. Oh my god, the cyclone did actually get a rocket away. Okay, maybe maybe this does work after all. <laughs> Although now I can't be sure whether it was the uh, the settings thing or <laughs> or the fact that there's uh, been a few versions of BD Armoury have passed. Come on, line up that shot. So the uh, the cyclones have managed to get theirs away. The lynxes haven't, which is interesting. Let's go back to one of the uh, one of the lynxes. One of the lynxes here. Surely a perfect opportunity to line up a shot. Oh, gets a couple away. So so nearly hit. So nearly hit. Some uh, some more explode down the bottom. So you can use them. But here's the thing: Would you want to? Because this has been going on for a while now, and apart from the one we just saw, they haven't really come close to any kind of impact. Oh my god! The Lynx did actually manage to get a hit onto one of the Cyclones. I don't know if that did any damage at all. Ben Kerman seems to be having some real difficulty with this craft. Something's been knocked out here. I'm not sure what it is. The, the air intake seem fine. The... What is going on there? He's run out of fuel. How's the other cyclone doing? The other cyclone's run out of fuel. Okay, so one of them was hit, but possibly only because they ran out of fuel. Right, as I said, I think the lesson here is you can use dumb fire rockets. You can use the hydro rocket pods and the like. To oh my god, look at that. <laughs> you can use these in air-to-air -air combat, but I, I, I don't think you'd want to. I mean, we've been going until the until the cyclones ran out of fuel, and now they're sitting ducks, and they're still flying relatively healthily towards the ground. Okay, I think that's something of a conclusion. Let's uh, let's move on. 
So a few videos ago I created this, my breaker, my little attack buggy, but I didn't really do as much with it during the video as I would have liked to have done. I mean, for starters, I didn't really test out these smoke countermeasure pods against incoming laser-guided missile attack, which I something I haven't actually done on this channel ever, so... Uh, this gives us an opportunity to right that wrong. On the runway, I have two of my Warthogs armed with a selection of laser-guided missiles. So we are going to take those off and see what those smoke countermeasure pods do to actually um, protect the little attack buggy against incoming strikes. OK, so I think I've set this up right. I've disabled the breaker's guns for, uh, for uh, air targets and missiles. So if I just click the guard mode on all of these, then, yes, yeah, selected the AGM-65. Uh, so this is just to see if the um, if the breaker as a static target is actually protected by those um, by those smoke pods. Those smoke pods, yeah, that's 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 a lot of smoke. Oh my god, that's not supposed to happen. That is not supposed to happen. It's shooting the um, shooting the missiles up the air quite nicely. Is that smoke enough to? Um, it does not look like it. No. Huh. Okay, change of plan. Okay, now we're going to see if a combination of smoke and anti-aircraft guns, uh, sorry, anti-missile guns, can protect the breaker. Let's uh, let's give this another go, shall we? The, uh, the A-10s come around. Oh, yes, there goes the gunfire. This is actually what it's supposed to be doing now. Oh, God, it doesn't look to be intercepting many of them, does it? And there comes the gunfire, and oh, dear. Okay, now let's see if those A-10s can actually hit a mobile target. I'm just going to throttle up here a bit. Let's get ourselves going. And then let's turn on the guard modes for all the uh, all the individual things. Again, these guns are set up to intercept missiles. Um, but hopefully the smoke pods will go off as well. And with a bit of luck, oh, I think they're going after the. I think they're going after the A10s. I was, I could swear I turned those off. Are the smoke pods actually going to go? Oh my god! I've just ah. <laughs> I spin out. I span out. <laughs> Spinned out, I spat out, made myself a sitting duck, and yeah, that's mm. okay. One more go, one more go, trying something different. Okay, so now with the combination of smoke pods, mobility, all guns trained to fire on the uh, on the uh, warthogs, and cover of the KSC, can I finally actually win this sodding competition? Let's um, let's see what happens. Oh my word, that's a lot of guns going straight into the, uh, straight into the Warthogs. Let's quickly get... So I've got to try and lose any IR tracking I have on me. Oh, spinning out, spinning out, spinning out, spinning out. That's not good, that's not good. Ah! There we go. Ah! Oh, it all came good in the end. Oh my god, that was close, whatever that was. Ah! I'm stuck on something! I'm stuck on something! It's all gone terribly wrong. It's all gone terribly wrong. <laughs> oh my god, it's the blast from my own guns. <laughs> the blast from my own guns basically scuppered me. <laughs> and what's happened to any of the uh, the A-10s? Hmm. <laughs> well, as they come round, we might. Oh, I've lost. I've lost the. Uh, I've lost the. Uh... I've lost the 50 cals, haven't I? They've got they're the ones with the uh, the really good uh, really good firing arc on them, aren't they? Although I do seem to have put some hefty damage into um, into one of the warthogs at least. <laughs> I think there's a chance I could have won that, but not with my driving skills. Hmm. Anyway, let's um let's move on, shall we? A while ago now, I made a video called uh, Who Needs Missiles? I think, it was, again, it was almost exactly three years ago, um, where I tried to find out if you were better off taking all the uh, taking all the extra weight and space that missiles were taking up and using it for guns instead. I think I strapped about 12 or so guns to a cyclone. <laughs> it was... It was quite a sight and my frame rate really did not like it. And I kind of had half planned to do a follow-up called Who Needs Guns, where I just strap a load of missiles to a craft. But 
Then I thought, well, that's only going to go one way or the other, and it's a bit of a risk to sort of plan a whole video around it. So this sort of gives us the ideal opportunity to test it today. I've taken one of my Lynxes, I've taken the guns off of it, I've put on, what was it, uh, 16 Sidewinders, we're down to the two AMRAMs. Uh, the AI is set up for one missile per target, uh, so that should give it a plentiful supply uh, in uh, in combat. And I put it up against the uh, the Cyclones again, just because, you know, it's... It's a little bit of an easy target. It'll just give us an, uh, an opportunity to see if it's if it's even vaguely plausible. So um, yeah, here goes. Let's uh, let's get them up into the air. And the competition starts now. This, of course, this will progress as per a usual fight. Um, apart from the fact the lynxes are just uh, going in with the one missile to try and conserve supplies. Hopefully they'll get rid of those AMRAMs. Uh, one thing I have done with the Sidewinders is put their range right down so they will, well, their minimum range right down so they should fire um, sort of down to about 200 metres. I wasn't paying attention. Is Legolak Kerman? Yeah, Legolak Kerman has gotten uh, the last of his AMRAMs away and will switch to, oh my god, one of the Cyclones has gone already. Okay, well, it's been damaged. Uh... Oh, yes, yes, Ghosty Kerman, I'm sorry, you you are kind of out of there. How do the Lynxes get on, though, with the... Uh, it'd be nice to see them get up close and personal with the, um... Something's exploded. Oh, my God, yeah. It'd be nice to see what happens when we get up close and personal with the missiles. I mean, really close range. At this sort of range, normally they'd be going for the guns. But, I mean, that... Oh! It's this sort of range where you, you sort of can really get the perfect, uh, oh, one of the Lynxes is gone. I didn't see that. This is a range where you can really get that perfect Sidewinder kill where you just pop it just at the right range. I mean, I think it's about, uh, probably about 800 metres or so, and the craft doesn't really have any time to do anything. And yeah, they just, Sidewinder just smacks right into it. Oh, the Cyclones, though. The Cyclones are managing to line up guns. This is not good. This is not good. Can, ah, uh, can they let Kerman actually line up one of his missiles. Yeah, goes for it. Ooh, nearly had a bead on the other Cyclone. Comes around. Tries to have the Cyclone pulls over the top. This is no, probably not going... Yeah, Steak's got... What happened there? I thought something was about to explode. Steak Kerman does have almost all of his missiles left. That will be making his craft much heavier. <laughs> Gunfire comes in, strips of most of those missiles, as well as part of his wing. So that's, that's not good news. I just think... The craft can't get round quickly enough. I think on a much more agile vehicle. Is that one of the cyclones getting in there? Getting a sidewinder away? That, it's not meant to be happening that way around. Oh damn it! Think of that. Kerman comes around. He can't. They can't get round quickly enough and for long enough to get uh, to line a shot up. That was a glorious opportunity. Why did you not take it, Lego Luck Kerman? Why did you not take it? Oh god. Steak Kerman. Steak Kerman holding on in there. Gunfire going in. It's going in from the site. Uh, the missiles are going in from the cyclones to the lynxes at the moment. That is just. <laughs> Why is it happening that way round? <laughs> oh, I tried so hard to uh, to make sure this was in favour of the uh, of the lynxes, but it, it's not worked. Legolak Kerman does manage to get the Sidewinder away though, to no avail. We'll now try and pull over the top. Can he get another one around the way? They just seem to be so slow to... Oh my god. One of the links is actually... The damage links has fallen to a Sidewinder. That is just... You are... This game really does take the piss sometimes. <laughs> and now Legolak Kerman has his gun stripped off by missiles. So... Probably a good thing I didn't try to make an entire video out of that. Because that may not have gone well. Can I can I salvage this situation? <laughs> Come on, Lego Luck. The landing gear the landing gear will cushion your fall. The landing ah. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I hope we've uh, I hope we've learned something here today. I have. Don't try any more of these bloody stupid experiments. Um 
Yes, if you have enjoyed the video uh, and you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, uh, following me on Twitter, maybe getting involved with the Discord, great BD Armoury and uh, KSP community on there, uh, and more besides. Um, all those links in the, des the description, as are links to the PayPal and the Patreon, if you want to help support the channel. You too can get your own little patron kerbal to be thrown into these futile missions like this. <laughs> as well as access to the uh, the Patreon-only Discord and uh, a mention on the end of the videos, that sort of thing. Um, I will be back soon with some hopefully more structured content, but uh, until then, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.